Two weeks in a row for Dave. Yeah, yeah. Dave is spot on with this stuff, I'll guarantee you. This is excellent stuff. Just again, in case you missed the previous show, the advantage of the flex cement over just the regular cement that you usually use? Yeah, okay, it's a flexible cement, and what it draws is, is a rubber-based cement, and uh, you can't pull the mater materials out. So why not use it all the time? Oh, I, I'm starting to use it all the time, huh? <laughs> oh, so you're going to give up on that cool little bowel? No, no, I'll put some in that. Oh, okay. Just too lazy to put in, that's all. Mm, you get the drill. Okay, now, what I've done is I've prepa prepared that dressmaker's pin by bending it, cutting it off, and then just bending it at right angles, about, uh, yeah. well, two millimeters, three millimeters? Looks like about two and a half. Okay, yeah, pretty close. Cool. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be using as a wrapping post, but it has to go in first. Okay. And uh, again, the reason why we use plastic headed ones is because it resists the ladder, right? What's it like, though? I mean, talking about weight forward, I mean, that that's, does that, I mean, I guess there's not much weight to a dressmaker's no, pin. No, no. But does it throw it off when you're casting that sucker out there in nope. terms of presentation or anything like that? No, nope. not at all. Does it help with distance? No. Nope. There's no disadvantage, no advantage. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> what can we say, folks? I gotta get him back somehow, boy. He was some cocky at that fishing show. <laughs> okay, now the next material to tie in. Oh, we broke our thread right on the end of that. Uh, and where you, where you bent the, uh, the pin up, the yeah. Pin up. Yes, you gotta be careful sure. with that. Yeah. But we're gonna take care of that now, boy. When I tie this wrap in. Next, you'll never yeah. see it. No, oh, I'll just lay it up so that it's gonna be covering that, you know? Okay. Just, I mean, why this is the first time you've used raffia, what exactly is it? Okay, raffia was, uh, originally, uh, uh, raffia was dried grass. Okay. And it didn't soak up water. What you'd have to do is you'd have to soak it so it would uh, bend without splitting. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't tie it on any other way. So what they did was come up with this synthetic raffia. And I guess it's just a... Uh, well, how would you say, it? it's some sort of a poly substitute, but it's a good substitute. It doesn't soak up water. It doesn't add to the flotation of the fly, but it just doesn't soak up water, which is most important. And Henry broke off again. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, it's okay. The thread is useless. No, it's not the thread. It's, it's the, the tire. Uh, just, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that, uh, that just a sharp edge on the, uh, on the dressmaker's pin, but that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of that. We're seeing all that because we got. And again, now we're going to lay down some of this cement. And the Dave cement. In there. Now, with yeah. this stuff here, you got to twist it up a little bit so it doesn't strand out too far. I mean, this is pretty wide. We'll show our, our viewers here. Yeah. Look how wide that is. Look. Yeah. Drop down a little bit. Yeah, okay. There you go. That's very wide. So what we do is we double it over and twist it over a little bit. And it crinkles. Yeah. See what a nice body that's making? Is that the same stuff that they use to, to tie up packages? No, it's close. It's it looks close. like. Yeah. So usually it's white. Yeah. And it's wrapped around boxes and stuff like that. You can't get the right colors in it. So that is a fly tying material? Well, or is it something that you've adapted to become a fly tying no, material? No, this is marketed as a fly tying material. Oh, okay. well, originally, I guess it was packaging material. Mm -hmm. A lot of things happen like that. You know, like in the jewelry trade, like the first voices that were using fly tying were jeweler's voices. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of borrowing of ideas and materials, whatever. Of course, that's something that, not to give away all your personal secrets now, but in case have, uh, some people have, you know, asked me some questions about you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, not very well, I shouldn't not very many, but Rob is, as a profession, is a goldsmith. Yep. Yeah. Which I guess is, sort of goes hand in hand with fly tying. It's great. You can pretty, pretty close to the same, yeah. you know? Working. But when our viewers look at my hands and they see all the burrs on my hands and my, my hands are dirty sometimes, it's so hard to get that stuff out of your hands, you know? So working with the jewelry. Oh, yeah, because of the yeah. polishing co compounds and you're always cutting your hands with gold or with the saw blade or files or whatever, so. Yeah. Don't write us and tell us that we need manicures. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna help. In this case, anyway. Yeah. Okay, we've got that wrapped in and tied off, and we left ourselves just a little bit of space there the behind head. the pin for the wing. Okay. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna get some of this natural brown bucktail dyed yellow. 
Now, evening this up is a little bit of a chore, so what we do with this stuff... I've got this cool... You really can't see it. We'll have to yeah. show this. When the, when the flies finish, you take that out and show it to everybody. Yeah, I'll have to take my voice out and everything. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, pardon me. Anyway, okay. He's got this, this cool thing attached to his vise for catching all of his uh, material. Yep. Okay, you got to hand stack this first. And in fact, I, I, don't, I, I like uh, hand stacking this material for the stone fly only and just um, not using the uh, stacker at all, you know? Okay. Why? Just a personal preference. Mm -hmm. I'll get it fairly close, you know, but uh, it just looks a little bit more natural on this particular fly. At one time, I was the only person besides Wolf and his immediate family that was allowed to make his surface stone fly. He'd send me up the bodies and I'd... Uh, the plastic bodies, and I'd do up the wing or the wings and the hackles, you know. The old fellow, he passed away. Hmm. Tremendous loss for everybody. Yeah, it was. He was a good friend of mine. He helped me anytime I ever asked him for advice or anything I ever asked him for. He he helped me out. Okay, now we're gonna lay down some cement. Now, unlike most times, I'm not gonna cut the to, uh, to cut this to length, mm -hmm. I'm just going to lay it right over to envelop the dressmaker's pin. Okay. Now you have measured off from the end though, haven't you? Oh yes. For, the, for where the tail, where you want your tail to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not quite long enough. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not quite long enough, John. That's why I'm here. I know. Point out these mistakes to you before you get too far ahead. Okay, we'll go down here again a little bit. Let it come down around. Well, I like to get that wing fairly flat to the body. And we've done it there now, I think. Yeah, that'll work out good. Once we wrap the wrap, wrap in, yeah. Okay. Once we put the wrap on it, it's going to really work out well. There. Okay. Well, before we get to the wrappy. Not the singer, but the uh, <laughs> and material. Rap, yeah, the, the, the material. That's okay, whatever. Okay. Now, while we're away, I just wrapped up the body with my thread for just a little while, mm -hmm. a little ways, just to flatten out that wing. Now I'm just going to take it off. Just uh, that was when the the wing had fairly well dried, you know, the cement. Now yeah. see how nice and flat it's laying. Isn't that beautiful? That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add it. Yeah. Okay. And the next material to go in. Now we're going to tie in the wrap here again. Okay. Right underneath. Underneath, tie it in underneath, and come forward. Is that slip? Is it going to slip out if you don't really tie it tight? Um, like all material? No, not really. It's not too bad. Okay. And what we do here is we're going to wrap in, tie in our wingman, or excuse me, our hackling. Okay, we get the stem tied in. Mm -hmm. We come forward and bind down those fibers. Now, the reason why I came both sides of the the, uh, the wrapping post with the hair is the so there won't be such a big break, you know, a big chopped off point, and everything will be slipping down over the eye. So we got pretty well the same diameter of material on our body as we do in the back as we do in the front, right? Do you, you say so? Do you agree? Yes, I. Yes, I do. Huh? I'll just leave it at that. Guy doesn't have an original idea in his head. <laughs> Yep. Oh yep. my, oh yep. my. Yep. How much time is left in this show? Yeah. <laughs> See you now. You <laughs> can <laughs> wrap it up without me. No, we don't mind a bit, <clears throat> a bit of good, good nature ribbon. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now, I twisted that raffy a little bit. I don't, don't want it sliding too far forward, you know? All right. I got to control it. There we go. Now we'll tie it off on top, just in front. We'll just make one wrap in front. Sure. And we'll tie it off. Difficult to do. You gotta be, you gotta be careful up, up around here. You know, you don't want to jam your eye, your eye up, right? If you get everything in your eye, you can't see very well. You know. Alright. <laughs> we get out of our nasty stuff, folks. He's just, he's on a roll tonight. Yes, sir. Appearing at a comedy club near you. Okay. How are you doing here? Now we're going to clip it out. Mm -hmm. We taught it off at four or five turns. I'm just going to bury that in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Make sure you close the eye 
the return of the oil, which is red if you don't, you get chopped out. Smell. Yeah. So far, so good. Now we'll wrap our hackle. And this is why we put that post in. <coughs> I'm going to make sure that's nice and straight on that. It is. Lovely. Now start, we'll wrap the hackle up around the bead first and work it down. Okay. So you lose the silver of the, oh, of yes, the, yeah. of the bead itself. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have long hackles for these flies because uh, you really want to fill them in good up front, you know? Because yeah. there's not much flotation in that fly. But if it is a fly that you fish fairly close in the surface film, it's a little harder to float, but I'll guarantee you this is one of my favorite, favorite flies. Okay, now we got that wrapped. I'm going to turn it over just a little bit, and I'm going to pull these fibers up a little bit. I don't want to bind down too many fibers when I tie off the front, you know? I'll tie off that hackle stem. Uh, tip of the hackle, actually. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to just raise it up a little bit so it will get out of my way. There. <coughs> oh, voila. Now, here's a little chore we got to do, and that's try to get all those hackle fibers out of the eye. Mm -hmm. And then when you're whipping off, you got to be some careful. So what I like to do here is almost stand it straight up in the vise. Grab back the hackles at front and do a one-handed whip. <laughs> oh! I'm sorry, a what? A one-handed whip finish. See, I had to hold those, those fibers up, right? I didn't want to bind them down, did I? Sure. You're just showing off. Now, all that's left to do is put some head cement on the front. And you're done. That's it, boy. Well, that's a nice fly. I need that myself, you know. That's like what poor uncle used to say. My God, that fly looks so good out of the water. He said, I need that myself. Hold me back. <laughs> so that's the surface stone of life. Okay, and you're looking at late June through July and early August. Yep. So when it heats up. When, when, well, when it, there's a lot of surface activity from the salmon. Yeah. You know, that's when the, yeah. that's when the fish them. And you fish it dry, but if it starts to sink down on you, that's not too bad. Oh, well, well, I'll tell you what I usually do. I usually cast upstream and uh, mend it so that the fly's coming down before the fly line. If for some, you know, for some reason the fly does drown, I let it swing around as it normally would with a wet fly. Mm -hmm. My golly, I've had some lashing on that. One year I got uh, 38 fish, 25 fell to the surface stone fly. Wow. I was catching them left, 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 right, and center. Yeah. Beautiful. 